Welcome! I'm going to walk you through a quick and simple method to divide or split a colony. I will first give a brief overview of the biology of a swarm and then walk you through how to perform a split. Swarming is a unique form of reproduction at the colony level. Honeybee swarms are a normal sign of a productive and strong colony. Swarming is when the majority of the worker bees in the colony, along with the queen, leave the original nest to establish a new nest, for example in a neighboring tree or the siding in a house. A split is an artificial swarm implemented by a beekeeper. It is used as a management strategy to reduce swarming incidences and increase colony numbers. The colony population of the western honeybee fluctuates throughout the year according to the seasons and resource availability. Here is a graph showing the daily number of adult bees and brood in a colony over the course of one season. This timeline is specific to temperate regions, however, these population trends are similar in southern regions. During early spring, the lengthening days and ample resources of pollen and nectar stimulate brood rearing. With this increase and the accompanying increase in adult bees, the nest area of the colony becomes crowded and the colony will begin swarming preparations. Swarming occurs when adult bee populations peak. In temperate regions, swarming peaks in mid-spring, during May and June. You can see there is a secondary peak in swarming during late summer, in July and August, as fall nectar flow begins. Swarming preparations begin with queen rearing, up to four weeks before a swarm issues. Colony congestion induces queen rearing, which leads to reduced transmission of queen pheromones throughout the colony. Common indicators that a colony is preparing to swarm include the presence of queen cells and increased drone brood. Swarming occurs during periods of intense flowering and you will notice foragers with copious amounts of pollen entering the colony. The first visual sign that a colony is preparing to swarm is the appearance of queen cells. A queen cell resembles a peanut. As queens develop, the cells elongate and the queen emerges from the tip. Workers tend to build queen cells along the edges and bottoms of the comb, although they can also be found on comb faces. After the eggs hatch into larvae, the workers provide a special gland food called royal jelly, which triggers the development of queen-like characteristics, including fully developed ovaries and glands for producing queen pheromones. Colonies rear on average 10 to 25 queen cells at once. As the new queen develops, the cells are capped, and within 72 hours of capping, a swarm issues. About one week prior to swarming, the old queen is prepped for flight. Workers feed her less, resulting in reduced egg laying, Thus, her abdomen diminishes in weight so that she can fly along with the swarm. The majority of bees that issue during a swarm are less than 10 days old. Several days prior to swarming, these workers will engorge with honey to ensure that they have sufficient food reserves while in transit. The swarm issues during the warmer hours of the day. About 60 to 70% of workers and the queen leave en masse from the entrance and cluster on a nearby object, for example a branch. This cluster can remain there anywhere from a few minutes to a few days. Scout bees will search the area to find a suitable cavity in which to establish a new nest. It is common for previous nests to become reoccupied. The original colony retains about 30 to 40 percent of workers along with capped and uncapped queen cells, brood, and food reserves including pollen and honey. The emerging brood in the original colony provides an influx of young workers and allows the colony's population to rebound until a queen emerges and begins laying. Here is a short video of an emerging queen. On day 16, the queen emerges. She chews a circular cut around the cap of her cell and workers generally assist the queen while she emerges. Often, the cap swings open when most of the cut is made. She eats, grooms herself, and begins to look for rival queens. Within three weeks after emergence, she will mate and begin laying. An emerged queen announces her presence by pheromones and a series of high-pitched pulse sounds, also called piping. Occasionally, two or more queens emerge at once. When this occurs, the queens will fight until only one remains. The queen will scout the comb, killing other queens that have yet to emerge by chewing a small hole in the side of the cell and stinging the occupants. Now let's take a look at swarm management. I will walk you through a step-by-step -step protocol of how to perform a split. Swarming can be a problem for beekeepers because loss of swarms from managed colonies can severely depress honey yields due to loss of bees. Splitting a colony early, before peak nectar flow, is a common practice that minimizes honey losses. It is also an excellent way to increase colonies and compensate for previous winter losses. 
Swarm management is necessary for overwintered colonies, but it is not uncommon for package bees to swarm during their first year, particularly during the summer. Swarm preventative strategies include removing existing queen cells, providing more space by adding additional hive bodies for both resources such as pollen and nectar and brood rearing, and splitting a colony. Colony splits are typically an early spring management tool as the colony comes out of winter, but it is not uncommon to split mid-season. Early recognition is essential to successfully split a colony. Two prime indicators are the presence of drone brood and the appearance of dandelions. Typically, splits are performed during the spring. In temperate regions, this will be in late April or May. Splitting prior to major nectar flows will allow colony populations to rebound and prevent significant losses in honey yields. It is important to wait until a colony is large enough so that after it's split, there are sufficient adult bees in each colony. A common mistake is to split when a colony is too small. A general rule is to wait until a colony is a minimum of two hive bodies tall and seems crowded. A good indicator of the time in which to split is when the dandelions are in bloom. Splitting a colony too early in the season can result in chilled brood and failure of the queen to mate. Another indication that it is time to split is the presence of queen cells. A charged queen cell is an elongated cell that contains royal jelly with an egg or larva, whereas a queen cup is empty and shorter. It is common to see queen cups throughout the season, even when the colony is not preparing to swarm. However, once a charged queen cell is spotted, it is time to split. The time frame between the presence of charged queen cells and swarming is very narrow and easy to miss. Thus, it is possible to split a colony prior to the presence of charged queen cells. However, the colony must be strong, with lots of bees and brood, and at least two, preferably three, hive bodies tall. Depending on the severity of the winter in your region, this can be as early as March or as late as May. Let's get started. There are multiple techniques to split a colony. Here, I will show you a common and simple technique that does not require moving or shaking worker bees. In general, the less that you disturb the bees, the easier it will be. It is important to have everything prepared in advance. Materials include a smoker, a hive tool, and an additional hive, including a lid, inner cover, hive bodies, bottom board, and empty frames. First, have your new equipment ready. For example, when I am performing a split, I set up the hive near where I am working to make the transfer of frames easier. Second, find the queen. This can be a tedious task when the colony is large. If the queen is present, there will be eggs. A few days before a swarm issues, the queen will cease laying in preparation for flight. If there are capped queen cells, no eggs, and the bee population has diminished, the colony probably has already swarmed. If the colony is large, one option is to find the queen a few days in advance, place her in the top or bottom super with a queen excluder, and on the day of the split, she will be easier to find. Finding the queen takes experience and can be difficult for beginning beekeepers. In general, it is easy to spot her if she is marked with a small dab of paint on her thorax. I also recommend splitting a colony on a warm and sunny afternoon when the bees are foraging because not only will the colony be more gentle, but the queen may be easier to spot because many of the workers will be foraging. Once you spot the queen, move her to the new hive, which will now be referred to as the parent colony. It is best to not physically handle the queen to avoid damaging her. An easy way to move her is to move the entire frame that she is on to the parent colony. Give this colony empty frames so the queen can continue to lay. Open and capped brood stay with the original colony, now referred to as the daughter colony. It is important that you do not place queen cells in the same colony as the parent colony with the laying queen because this may stimulate a swarm. Next, split the resources, including pollen and honey, evenly between the two colonies. Do not attempt to shake or remove the bees from these frames. Next, switch the locations of the colonies, placing the parent colony with the laying queen in the original location. About one third of the colony are foragers, and the reduced population in this colony will quickly be replenished as the foragers return and the queen continues laying, so be patient. Place the daughter colony with the capped queen cells and brood to a new location, either in the same or a different apiary. As worker bees emerge in the daughter colony, the population will replenish over time until a new queen emerges and begins laying. Because the nurse bees in this colony have yet to leave and make orientation flights, they will return to the location in which you place this colony. It will take on average three weeks before you will spot eggs. It is recommended to give the parent colony an additional hive body so the queen has ample room to continue laying and storing resources. 
Here is an animated diagram to summarize this process. Choose a sunny and warm day in which to perform the split. Set up the new equipment near where you will be working. After finding the queen, place her, along with the frame she is on, in the parent colony. Split pollen and honey evenly between the colonies. Switch locations of the colonies. Give the parent colony an additional hive body so the queen has ample room to continue to lay. The foragers will return to the parent colony, and the nurse bees along with the developing queens and brood will remain in the daughter colony. The nurse bees in the daughter colony have yet to leave the colony and make orientation flights, so these bees will return to the location in which you place this colony. At this point, the daughter colony can be left to rear a new queen. If you are introducing a new queen cell, you would do this now. There are multiple methods to requeen a colony. The daughter colony can be left to rear a new queen. You can introduce a queen cell from another colony, or a new queen with specific genetics can be introduced. If you are introducing a new queen, it is important to wait three days before introducing her. During this three-day period, workers will begin rearing new queens from worker brood, and so it is important to remove all queen cells before introducing her. Otherwise, this could cause rejection of the new queen. If you are splitting a colony before the presence of queen cells and you do not have access to a queen or queen cell, you can let the bees rear a queen from worker eggs. After splitting, it is best to not disturb the daughter colony for two to three weeks so that the queen can emerge, mate, and begin laying. After three weeks, I recommend checking the colony for eggs. Feeding is encouraged when it is still too early in the season to forage or the weather does not permit foraging. Frames of honey can be given to the colony. If you do not have frames of honey, Alternative feeding methods include a mason jar, an entrance feeder, or a division board, commonly called a frame feeder. If using a division board, place floaters, for example styrofoam balls, or a ladder that is highlighted in red, inside so that the bees have something to land on and will not drown. Examples can easily be found online. Congratulations! You have successfully split a colony. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and happy beekeeping!